Hey everybody, Jem Schofield here with the C47 and another episode of Gearbox. Finally, I'm standing outside. It's still very cloudy, but there's no rain. So it looks like we might get a couple, a couple of good days here on the Cape. I think it's on the Cape. On the Cape, in the Cape, up here an airplane. Let's see how bad that is. Pretty bad. Um, by the way, you've got to have decent headphones with you when you're recording stuff. Obviously, if this was a real interview with somebody, we would stop this take. I might just let the interview go, uh, the answer go, and then afterwards ask them again. But that airplane would definitely be distracting, especially if I was trying to cut part of one question in with another one. Also, we had a dryer going on over there. I was listening, and I could hear that going on earlier on. So you've got to have a decent pair of headphones. There's a couple of them out here. I use pretty much the standard, which are the 7506s from Sony. They cost about 90 or 100 bucks. But you've got to have these in your kit. Um, there's the sun. So now the light's going to change considerably. So even though I metered for correct exposure, this is the other problem that you have when you're outside. Obviously, if you're using one single take and the light changes, the audience will accept that because they'll they'll see that something's changing with the lighting, but now this sun is peeking out of this cloud and this is gonna be a little bit of a problem. That's why when you're outside, especially when they're shooting features or they're doing television, they're really trying to overpower what the sun is doing with large HMIs because they wanna have as much of a controlled environment as possible when they are shooting in natural light. So, all right, a couple of uh, things from yesterday. People wanted to know about lenses. I have made uh, quite a number of posts or episodes that have to do with old lenses that I like to use. I use usually both Nikon and also the Olympus lenses, and I'm partial to the Olympus OM lenses, the Zucos, because I think that they um, have tremendous value for what they are. They're incredibly lightweight. The optics on them are really, really nice. And some of them, even though they have some softness to them, they just have sort of a beauty to them that I really, really love. And so I'm going to link you guys to some older episodes. Philip Bloom just did an episode on lenses or a, a post, so I'll send you guys to that. Actually, one of the people who uh, watches the C47 actually did a comment post on that, which uh, is something that Philip posted, I don't know, two or three days ago. And that talks about a lot of the newer glass, L glass and Canon glass, that you can use with DSLR cameras for video. And then there are the uh, Zeiss ZE lenses, which I love. I have a set of those, and I use those all the time. The problem with using the older lenses, and I've talked about this, is that they're inconsistent, meaning that you could buy three or four different Nikon lenses from slightly different time periods, and the coatings, the color rendering on them would be slightly different. And let me just see what's happening audio-wise. And it's not too bad. I have a dead cat on here, so that's helping. And that coating is going to create, and those individual lenses not made all at the same time are going to create inconsistencies in the overall look and feel that you're going to get if you're swapping out lenses. Now, if you're just using one lens on a shoot, it doesn't really matter. And so, you know, right now I'm using that Olympus lens. Sometimes I'll throw on another lens, a Nikon lens or something like that, and they're inexpensive. They have really great optics and they're definitely worthwhile if you're on a budget. But if you're looking to get a set of lenses for a, you know, for a real shoot, then you really want to try to get lenses if you're going to be swapping primes out or even zooms that are going to match up well so that you have less work to do in post to do that. Um, all kinds of noise out here today. Uh, another great comment about the little uh, silk and moving that further away to diffuse the light more, but then you might need a larger silk or diffusion, and then of course a larger light source. So when we use soft boxes, they're generally much, much bigger than these little LEDs, but we can get away with them. Right now I don't have any diffusion on here. I'm outside, I'm just trying to lift the light a little bit, create a little bit more of a catch light, and that's why I'm using it. So. Um, Another thing, somebody had a question about seeing the recording from the 5D Mark II on the little Marshall. Um, I have the uh, 70 XP uh, from, from Marshall, and it, your 5D Mark II does have an HDMI out, but when you hit record, it goes into a 480p mode, and it has the apparency that it's filling up most of the screen. I basically turn all the info 
options off on the camera so I can see as much of the image as possible, but I still do have pillar boxing, just to let you know. So it's there, but it's very slight and it looks like it's filling up most of the screen when you're recording. Um, what else do I have to talk to you guys about? Oh, sometimes people want to know about my work. So I have a rough cut of a project that I just did for an organization, a nonprofit called the Foundation for Jewish Camp, and I got hired to do a fundraising video for them for this program they do every year called Cornerstone, which is where they basically take third-year counselors and they bring them into a specialized program that allows them to help create the curriculum for that year's uh, camp that they're involved with. And so it's camps from all over the country and actually I think even from Canada and they all come together for a week and we went down and I have some older episodes from that shoot which I'll also link to at least one of here. Birds are going crazy here and you guys can see at least a rough cut of what that shoot kind of became just to get an idea. We're using a lot of snap zooms on the camera, a lot less of the sort of dolly moves, but all shot on the 5D Mark II. And um, yeah, there you go. I talk about the lighting setup a little bit in these other episodes that I'll link back to from earlier on. And I think that's it for today. I'm happy that I'm outside and I will see you guys next time on Gearbox.